current trends are very uh, clear. First of all, uh, it's easier and easier for companies to gather data. So there's this big data movement, and that doesn't appear to be slowing down anytime soon. Uh, number two, uh, currently advertisers can already engage in uh, personalized advertising or uh, dynamic creatives. The underlying idea is that, well, since I know some information about this consumer, uh, what he or she likes to buy, what types of preferences they have, um, maybe this is based on browsing history, maybe purchase history, maybe zip code, all these things are observable online today. Uh, why don't I use that information to cater my message, to tailor my message to that particular user? And so we wanted to understand where are we headed, where we will be in, say, 10 years' time. There's a reason that advertisers will do what they're doing, and there's a reason consumers will buy or not. And so game theory allows us to incorporate consumer incentives and advertisers' incentives into a model. So the model is very, very simple. Um, first of all, the advertiser can collect information about consumer. Then the advertiser can send a message that can rely on that information or not, and then the consumer can decide whether to um, buy or not, for example. So this could be anything. It could be a, a, a dealership trying to attract a consumer for a test drive. It could be a realtor trying to atta attract a person to um, visit an open house. Or it could be an online ad trying to get me to the store and try a new pair of sneakers. The first thing that we're identifying and exploring is the fact that by giving information, we're lending ourselves to be uh, targeted. Um, and in a, in a sense, that information can be used against us by the other party. A big question in marketing is uh, that of truth in advertising. Right? That's central to marketing. Can we trust sellers and what they claim? And um, even the Federal Trade Commission allows advertisers to what they, engage in what they call a persuasive puffery, to puff up their attributes, to claim that they have the best burgers in town or that they have you know, the, the, the most um, trendy shirts or you know, whatever you want, uh, when in reality this is always a little hard to judge. These are subjective claims, but if they're uh, you know, sort of reasonably um, sort of expected claims, expected exag exaggerations, well, that turns out to be legal. That creates a very interesting interaction with personalized advertising because if I have that leeway to convey the exact attributes that you care about, I can customize my message to make it the most appealing to you as possible. Right? Um, at the same time, as consumers understand that this is happening, that's the genesis of the credibility issue. They understand that the, advertising has, that the ads have been tailored to their tastes, and so now that creates a mistrust from consumers between consumers and, and advertisers. They understand that advertisers have that leeway to customize their message to, become, to make them the most attractive possible. And so um, the sometimes reported low credibility that advertisers already have with consumers um, is uh, in peril of becoming even less credible. So in an age where data is almost free and it's becoming so easy to collect data, um, how should we think about what is best for advertisers? Should they get better data or not? And what is best for consumers? For companies, uh, best practices are to always inform customers of the data that they are collecting about consumers. And that is a good thing for companies. It's, we usually think that's, you know, why would companies want to disclose that? Well, it turns out consumers will appreciate um, uh, the, the fact that there's clear privacy policies and there's clear data disclosure policies. And you know, companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon now have um, that type of information. And you can access your personal information that they're collecting about you. On the consumer front, should I share my personal information with advertisers or not? Uh, well, it turns out we find the following effect. If um, these are mainstream preferences, like um, I would like a spacious uh, house or a family-friendly car, those are sort of mainstream preferences. Lots of people have those preferences. It turns out we don't benefit quite a lot from, from giving off those inf that information. If anything, um, we can get salespeople now pitching us back our tastes. Right? Uh, however, if our tastes are very specific, okay, if there is something we really would like to find or we would like to be found uh, by, so maybe I like this particular type or genre of comic book or this particular type of music that very few people like or there's very few artists playing, then I would like to be found by those people. And so those are the situations where I, I would like to give off inf information and, and disclose my likes and dislikes are in settings where um, my tastes are really not representative but they're really um, sort of niche uh, type uh, tastes. 
in a sense, an ironic finding of our paper is that um, better information can be worse for advertisers, which is really surprising. It's a perverse effect. I get better information about consumers. This is all what managers talk about, sort of this big data revolution. And I can become worse off. Because consumers are understanding that, con that firms are taking advantage of these data um, to personalize their messages, to target them. And um, they're not likely to respond in a positive way to these types of ads. And con consumers and, and firms really have only two ways to go about this. In particular, managers can either decide not to gather too much data about consumers, which is hard to, to impose, or at the very least um, disclose how those data are being used. And so if I'm seeing an ad, if I'm targeted with an ad, I would like to know why I'm getting this ad. Um, getting rid of that uncertainty for consumers is useful because now they can make the call, they can understand, well, okay, this firm has this data about me, they want to rank, recommend me this product, but it's up to me whether I want to pay attention to that call to action or not.